Welcome to the Next Ones Network, and shout out to all my ones. We have the Ka Native, redshirt sophomore, Lamine Janae, um, out of Cal State Northridge, uh, local native guy. Um, we're based in Allen, LA at, at Next Ones Network, and um, he declared for the NBA draft, and that, that's no surprise to us. Um, Janae possesses the perfect blend of skill and efficiency that he clearly displayed in the Big West for, for two years straight. He's two-time Big West Player of the Year and first team selection. He averaged over 25 points, 10 rebounds. As someone coming from the Big West, man, that's very, very impressive. Uh, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, man, I'm great. I'm, I'm really excited to get you a part of the network. Um, like I just said, you're a number one player for the 2019-2020 season. Um, that's on every player on the D1 level, um, regardless of school. So all the Duke guys, ACC, Pac-12 mm -hmm. guys, you know, you're at the top. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I know we're just a startup up and coming, but what does that mean to you? Uh, it meant a lot of things for me, because, you know, I came from a long way, so me making, like, to this far, like, in my part of my life, so, like, good thing for me, like, you know, so I'm happy for it. Me too, man. It means a lot to us. Like, for our first year being out, to make, to have someone that's a big representative of our, of our brand, um, Obviously, next one's where Player Discovery Network that likes to highlight uh, players that have talent that need more exposure. And luckily, uh, our website and, and our, our team found you. And uh, looks like we're not on a on a bad track because you declared for the league, didn't take too long, um, and you started like you said. You came from a long way. You started around 13, 14, correct? Yeah. Man, that's that, that's that's amazing, man. Um, you've you. done more in a less amount of time that a lot of people have. Um, you bursted on the scene, uh, and, and to my recollection, uh, playing for Team Africa, for Team Adidas. I, yeah. I mean, for during Adidas Nations, uh, you yeah. averaged, you know, a little under 30 points in six games. Uh, <laughs> yo, shout out to Drive Express. Uh, they even rated sure. you uh, one of the best, the best prospect in that camp, uh, ahead of guys like DeAndre Ayton. Um, since then, like you said, you've come a long way. How have you expanded your game? Uh, that camp, like, really helped me, for, like, on my confidence. Because, you know, when I went there, you know, I feel like some top player, like, number one player out there, you know. Yeah. So, me playing against, like, people like that, like, you know, averaging, like, 20, more than 20 points a game. So, that helped my confidence after that. Yeah, I would help anybody's confidence playing the Adidas Nations, man. And, and I'll shock a lot of people, you know, when you're you're playing against that top competition and then you choose a, a school like Cal State Northridge, Northridge in, in the Big West. Um, I know you had some some uh, other factors that led you to determine that uh, that scholarship, but that you touched on. But is anything um, else or any advice that you would give to players on the rise that are, are blowing up, um, you know, based off of their production or undervalued? What would what advice would you give them from someone that was in your position um, for right now? Uh, sometimes, like, it really doesn't matter, like, where you're going, you know. You can go to your mid-major and, you know, still, like, you know, prove yourself, like, you're better than the other people in the big major. So it doesn't really matter. You just got to, like, choose the best decision for yourself and, you know. So, and that's what I do, so. Yeah, man. And, yeah. That's why you're the number one player. It's all about production. Um, I think for you, sure. go, you go to, you know, for example, maybe if you went to a high major, you won't get that as much opportunity to show your for skills. Sure. And, you know, it's kind of like that, that metaphor of big fish, small pond, you know, that gives more guys more opportunities to be seen. And guys like, you know, next ones of the player discovery network to tap into and find you guys because we want to sure. you know help help that generation and, and those type of prospects as well and you've been in the country for seven years like i said you've done a lot and in, in a, a little amount of time what's your favorite basketball memory uh so far in your career a basketball memory uh i have a lot so you know i don't have, i i I cannot, you know, choose only one. Hey, we me. got time, man. Whatever you want to share to the fans. <laughs> hard for me. Probably when I score my career high in college. So. Career high in college versus yeah. who? Uh, Cal State Fullerton. 
Oh yeah, of course. We got that on your profile. Um, yeah, that was that was nasty. Um, especially your games versus Riverside this year too. We got a chance to to get uh, yeah. up close and personal with you on on the court, and uh, I was like, man, he's big. Like, <laughs> it's one thing from a, a bird's eye view, but when you got that uh, when you're on the court and see your actual size, man, it's impressive. Um, you know, you have the NBA size already. Your production speaks for itself, um, and a lot of versatility is being valued in the NBA. Um, for sure. So what do you, what do you think you add to NBA, any NBA team that's the scouting you now? What, what's something that's underrated that you think that NBA team should value by yourself? Uh, I can't help a team like from a lot of things. Cause like, you know, uh, I can play defense and, you know, I can help on rebounding and, you know, I can score the ball too. So like, I'm not just as like defensive player. I can do like everything. On the course, so yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, and I think you proved that during your freshman season. Um, you know, you burst on the scene. Sure. You know, you're putting up numbers that were compared to one and done prospects like Kevin Durant, DeAndre Ayton, uh, Michael Beasley. Those are top three pick guys. Then you could put your name right yeah. there. Um, what yeah. comes to mind when you hear those comparisons from your freshman season? Uh, it just it just motivate me like you know to push harder. So yeah. when I see something like that, it just motivate me like to push harder. That's it. Yeah, man, those those are big time names, and and you know obviously you had those comparisons early as a freshman year, and to follow that up your your sophomore year, and then declare uh, means a lot. You know, have that expectations, but to meet that and and a bit on yourself uh, that that speaks sure. that speaks for itself, and you know shout out to. Our, our director of scout scouting, Colin Brown, um, you know, I tapped into his interview before uh, yeah. we conducted this, and you've been quoted saying that you know you watched people like Kevin Durant and, and Tracy McGrady, and you like to compare you know your game to them. Um, yeah. You know, what's what's your favorite part about you know those are two different those are scoring wings, but those are two different styles. What what's your favorite you know uh, attribute that Kevin Durant brings to the table that you like, and also Tracy McGrady? What I like on Kevin Durant, like, he just, like, he scored, like, so effortless, like, you know, if he just moves, like, with the basketball. So that's something I really like about him. And, you know, he can score, like, from everywhere in the court, like, mid-range. Like, he can drive to the basket and he can shoot the threes. So he just complete, like, from everything. That's what I like about him. So. Yeah, yeah, Team Max a monster, man. Two-foot jumper. <laughs> Definitely inspired yeah. the whole generation. Um, but, but back yeah. to you, you know, before you got a chance to step on the court of CSUN, uh, you injured your wrist. Um, you had the red shirt. Um, and ultimately, you know, you lose a year. Uh, what was the biggest lesson you learned from that, that uh, coming back from that injury and having a red shirt? Uh, having a red shirt, yeah. I was really nervous, like, because, like, you know, that's my first time, like, getting surgery, like, and I didn't know, like, if I was going to be the same after that, my hand and stuff. So I was kind of, like, you know, nervous, like, after that. So after I took my cast off, I just started working out. And I doing rehab, working out, working out, too. So and after, like, two months, three months, I started getting my confidence back. So that's something I learned, like, you know, never, like, I never doubted myself after that because I, I never, after that, I know like I can do everything. So it helped me, helped me on my confidence. Yeah, definitely. Confidence is key, especially if you uh, have that that setback that's out of your control. Most importantly, um, and it's embedding on yourself and staying sure. true to your rehab and consistent, and you know being a student of the game and getting better in other aspects. Is anybody you know while you were were out during that time? Was there anybody that you were watching specifically? Or, you know, where you're trying to just adapt to the college game and, you know, the the environment of college. Well, obviously, I can, you know, relate to, um, you know, just being a freshman and, and not having basketball. Uh, playing, you know, you have basketball, but you're playing, you know. What other things did you do that to, you know, take up time? Uh, I was just working out. I remember that time before I had my surgery, I was out, but uh, I had a tennis class, so I was playing every 
like Friday tennis with my left hand before I, I got my third game after two. Yeah. Oh, so, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing that every Friday. That's something I like doing too that time. So. So you like you like you like playing tennis? Yeah, after that, I really like playing tennis. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's pretty it's pretty cool. I I've developed a, a love for tennis. Uh, you know, shout yeah. out to the parents that live out in the desert, so that. And I, really and I was just and I was just working out too with only with my left hand too, because that was the only thing I could have used, and that's what I was doing, working out with my left hand and my body at that time, and playing tennis. I'm playing tennis, <laughs> nice. So you know, obviously, you pick up accolades your, your freshman year, Big West Player of the Year, Newcomer of the Year. We already know, um, easy, mm-hmm. not easy money, but you know, obviously, production speaks for itself. So. Uh, but the mm-hmm. second year, obviously, you know, let's speak from my experience, me being a, a former UC Davis Aggie, uh, defensive anchor, I would say leader, uh, three point shooter. I <laughs> definitely would have to guard you. You know, you'll be, you're on definitely a lot of guys' game plan, you know. The, the cat's yeah. out the bag. Everyone knows Lamin Janae is bringing 25-plus yeah. and 10 on your head. Yeah. And, and he's going to let you know about it. How, what, what are some of the adjustments that you had to make uh, from your freshman to sophomore year? Uh, my, freshman, uh, my freshman year, I remember, like, at the beginning of the season, earlier of the season before we started the conference, it was like way much easier, like easier to score, and I was scoring easier and stuff. So coming after that to conference, I started getting double team, sometimes triple team, and I learned about I, I just think my game, you know, because after that, like it was kind of hard to score. So I learned like more after that, so learn how to adjust my game and you know find the open man after that. Yeah, you have to be more creative, get more bodies around you. Um, For sure. Obviously, you, you play all around. You know, you play from the wing, you play in the post, you get to the line. Uh, where do you think you, you saw the most of your double teams? Uh, most in the mid range. When I got in the mid range, I was getting double team out there and in the 3 2 mostly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we, we cover a lot of mid major guys, um, people that need more recognition. And one of your teammates, Ro Gomez, is, is one of them. Uh, he's been yeah, quoted he's saying uh, that you're going to bring defensive, uh, defense slashing and rebounding to the next level. Um, obviously, your scoring speaks for itself. Uh, what else do you think you can add? I know you touched on it a little bit, but what else do you think you can add, you know, as a, as a teammate uh, to an NBA team? Uh, I'm a great teammate, so, you know, it's not – I'm a great teammate. I can, you know, have my team, like, of the court, you know, motivating and, you know, talk about the game and stuff, so – and I'm built, I want to learn. So me talking a new teammate, like that's something I want to do. So awesome. Thanks. And and I heard you're a quick learner. Um, the reason why I say that is because when you came into the states, uh, you know, uh, PJ Washington was quoted saying that you basically only knew yes and no, um, and you uh, learned English through watching television. Um, what shows are you you watching now to? you know, past time during the coronavirus and in between workouts and stuff like that? Uh, the shows I be watching, I watch, uh, I don't really watch show anymore like that, but I be watching like, how we say, I used to watch All American and that's yeah. something I used to watch. Too busy grinding, I understand that, man. Yeah. Uh, no, no time for that, especially in these, these, <laughs> these times. Um, for sure. So obviously we, we spoke on your strengths. Let's let's speak on the opposite, some of the weaknesses. Um, what are some of your limitations right now on the basketball court that you think that you know you're aware of? And if so, you know, what have you been working on in the in a, in the pre draft process to improve on those weaknesses, those limitations? Uh, I think I don't really have weaknesses, so and <laughs> I, I don't think so. I have weaknesses, so that's what I think right now. All right, cool. Love it, love it. You know, I know you said you wanted to to, to speak on shot selection um, before, but I know with the next level, that's a that's an automatic adjustment. You know, it comes with the team. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, you've been you're pretty much an all around playmaker, basketball yeah. player. You know, um, and that's how we would describe you. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm glad that you actually said that because you know you can either take it one way. That's a very confident statement, 
or you look at your production and it says for itself, you know, you're efficient, uh, you get to the line, you score all three mm -hmm. levels, you're improving the catch and shoot shooter, um, you know, through the people that I've been asking around and, mm -hmm. you know, you're just going to continue to improve because you already had that bug, you know, coming over sure. here and starting from scratch. So, um, sure. you know, we know you're a workhorse and, and that's a journeyman. I, don't, he's, I guess he's labeled a journeyman, but fellow Big West alumni like Orlando Johnson and, and uh, James mm -hmm. Ennis um, mm -hmm. and, and you, you know, former Big West player of the years, have that, that, that yeah. gene and they landed on mm -hmm. the NBA roster. So, you know, yeah. maybe that could be the same future for you. Um, for sure. But, you know, throughout your career, you know, we always, through the end of this interview, we were talking about you killing, you know, you giving buckets, coming out of nowhere, mm -hmm. Team Africa, fresh on the scene, um, and then going to the Big West, going to unprecedented route and mm -hmm. determining your own lane. Have you ever been on a team where you weren't the man, where you were just a role player and you had to adjust? To uh, I, my, my first year coming out of Finlay, I wasn't the man of the team, even my second year or two, but, you know, it didn't bother me and I was playing good, still scoring when I catch the ball, still make plays for my team and, you know, have my team on defense too. So mm -hmm. I think I was a great teammate too, so. Yeah, let's do it. What is something that people don't know um, about you that you would like people to know? Uh, I'm gonna say probably off the court, me, like, you know, when I don't do nothing, like, you know, I play Madden and FIFA. So. Yeah, you're a homebody? <laughs> Sometimes, most of the time, yeah. Most of the, most of the day, Ari, that's very honest, most of the time, cool. Um, if I go out, if I go out, I go to the, like, if I go, I go to the gym, so yeah. when I go back, I just stay home and play video again. I hear you, man. You're going to save a lot of money if you keep that up. <laughs> That's for, for sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So I guess there's more of a, a personal aspect of this, this interview. Um, so if you could play for any NBA team, your choice, you know, the means world, I'm just living in it. What team would you live, uh, play for and why? I don't know. Like, I wish I could because I'm not from here. It's not like I grew up in the city, like, we have an NBA team, you know. I would have dreamed about, like, playing my gym city, you feel me? So I don't really have a team, like, you know, wherever team, you know, comes. So Gives that up. Yeah, I respect it, man. I respect it. Yeah. Um, given an opportunity, let's say you, you sign, let, for example, let's say you sign a, a 2 A or Exhibit 10. Um, would you uh, relish the opportunity to play in the G League and, and contribute that way and, and earn some minutes? Or, um, you know, what does that process look like for you? you know? uh, the goal is to play to the NBA. So, you know, I don't, I'm for myself, you know, going to G League. If I have to, you know, I'm ready for it. You know, so you got to earn your minute and stuff. So that's something you got to earn. So I'm ready to earn my spot wherever I go. Nice, man. Um, again, I touched on it. I just love the Big West so much. I just talk about it all the time and, and products that come out of there. Um, and I, I've been guilty of this a, a few times, uh, you know, on the rim, swinging, you know, passionate about the game, getting texts. Um, and you, re you received a few uh, during the years, your years at CSUN as well. Um, mm -hmm. How would you address your concerns about technical fouls if, if someone asked you about that? Uh, mostly just by be hyped, you know. Sometimes, you know, when I dunk on somebody, I be hyped, so I be on their face. That's how I be getting my technical fall. So it just be hyped, and you know, the and love of the love of the game. So yeah. that's why. Yeah, Big West refs gotta relax, man. Let my let my guys swing on the rim a little bit. Luckily in the league, they let they let guys do that. So I'm sure you're gonna be safe. Sure. Um, yeah. All right, awesome, man. And I know uh, we touched on comparable seasons earlier. Uh, you had a comparable season with Kevin Durant, uh, Michael Beasley. Uh, but who do you compare your game to? I know we've been quoted saying, you know, the next uh, Siakam, Pascal Siakam, um, in our montage we made of you. Uh, but personally, uh, of you, you know, coming out of your mouth, who do you compare your game to and why? Uh, I don't really compare my game to anyone. I compare my game to my game, you know. I always have, like, you know, how I play. I feel like he's different than most of the people. So mm -hmm. I don't compare my game to anybody. 
like what you say, I hear people say you play like Pascal, but you know, he's a great player. He like is a great player. Um, I think they they're, they love to make that comparison because they appreciate your all around production, and that's kind of what we can see. And besides, people are kind of scared to say that about like you know a former NBA champion like Kawhi, you know, so they go with the past Asiakum. But I get it. Your your own type. I, even the way you score is totally different. Um, yeah. And I and I agree with what you're saying. What advice um, are you getting? Um, what advice are you getting about what you should be doing at the next level? Uh, I work on my on my shots. You know, on my shot selection. You know, work on my you know three point shot in my body, and that's something. I really need, like, you know, to go to the next level. So that's something I'm looking to improve every time I. Yeah, awesome, man. What what does that training regimen look like and, and consist of? I know you say you want to work on your body. Obviously, you're going to work on your, your attributes and your skill set. But what does that training and nutrition regimen look like? Uh, it's looking good, you know. I don't looking really. good, know. huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't eat, like, you know. I don't I don't eat burger. I right, so I eat all those stuff. I eat healthy, so eat healthy? What's your favorite uh, thing to eat? What's your favorite meal? If you could have a, a go to like Lamine special pre draft meal, what's your go to? Like what you mean, like like healthy meal or just a meal I I no, love. No, pre draft, like like you wanna eat good but you also wanna be healthy. You wanna you wanna get ready for the league but you wanna eat good. Mm. I like I like pasta. Pasta, get those carbs up. Yeah, for sure. Nice, nice. that's a good. I, I love pasta too. Um, who's the best player you played against in your career? Uh, against uh, best player in college or just best player ever? Ever in your whole, in your entire career, who's the best player? Uh, in Adidas Nation, I played against Dennis Smith, and he he really impressed me. I like how he was in high school so he really impressed me but that was my first time really playing against top players yeah, in America he was, was bananas in high school he was great <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he was really he really impressed me so think. all right how about a part two of that how about in college in college uh in college I I, I didn't really see somebody really impress me like so mm -hmm. yeah Cool. And um, lastly, I like to, you know, this is Status Symbol. Um, this is our next episode. And on, on Status Symbol, we like to unveil, you know, the stories and, and lessons and, and really highlight the players that represent the brand and what we like, um, all, what we like about them and, and next ones and how that has some synergy. Um, mm -hmm. With that being said, I like to ask all of my prospects, uh, what are three essential items you can't live without? Basketball, probably. All right, all right. <laughs> you say items, so probably my phone. Oh, cool. Solid. Damn, I was tough now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's why I save it for the last, man. Uh, Basketball. Oh, no. Say items, so probably my PlayStation. Yeah, <laughs> but we gonna play it on TV. Or that that comes with a bundle. I'm a I'm a drop I'm a I'm a drop my phone and and take the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all take the TV and the PlayStation. We, we gonna upgrade you, be like, all right, got his place PS5, his phone, his basketball. He's good to go. That that is that's more proof that he's a homebody. He ain't gonna be out in the streets. Yeah, that, <laughs> that 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 really helped me. Like really be focused. So. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for taking the time to interview with us. Um, really, really, you know, appreciative of you, you know, taking the time. You know, you being the number one prospect it means the world to us. Um, a great representative of the brand and what we hope to accomplish for our athletes after you. And we want to keep up with your content no, no matter where you land. Um, and, uh, you know, continue with on the court, off the court content and give, you know, your fans what they need. For sure. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks. Thank you.